Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Wednesday catch-up. In today's video, I've been asked if I can do a little bit on TIG brazing using DC, as opposed to brazing using an oxycetylene or an oxypropane flame. So what I've done, I've, well, I've just shown what I've done. I've done a little bit of gas brazing, a little bit of TIG brazing, or TIG, well, it is TIG brazing using silicon bronze wire. I hope you find that interesting. Last weekend, I think it was last weekend, the Sonic cleaner the Thomas sent us, I cleaned that carburetor and I wasn't that impressed to tell you the truth so Thomas has sent us some more cleaning fluid which is specifically to clean a carburetor that's cooking away in here now so we'll give it 20 minutes in there have a look and see what sort of effect that's had I did put some of Deb's jewellery in and it come up absolutely amazing it didn't take the plating off so it must be the real deal right, it's fizzling and bubbling in there quite violently in the vapour that comes off, it actually catches your throat. It tells you to do it in a sort of well ventilated space. You don't breathe the vapours in. It's flammable, it kills fish, it's got all the, the things going for it. So I'll give it 20 minutes in here, then we'll have a look. These are four different brazen rods with different properties. The first one is silicon bronze, that is copper and tin. The second one is also silicon bronze, the same rod, just thinner. So there are your rods you can use for TIG welding. Next are brazen rods. That one there is pure brass. Brass is copper, tin and zinc. You can't use that for TIG brazen. That is also a brazen rod, but it's filled with flux. It's got a flux call it. The ordinary brazen rod, you need to dip into flux using the silicon bronze with TIG, you don't use flux. I think the first thing I'll do is I'll demonstrate a little bit of ordinary brazing using a flux cord brazing rod. Then we'll go on to the TIG set, which is what I've been asked to do, and do some DC TIG brazing. This is two mil mil steel plate, and I'm going to do a, a braze joint down there, and I'm going to use this rod here. It's actually a Eutechnic flux cord rod. It's got flux inside it. The heating source is going to be oxypropane. Little oxypropane torch there. We used to use oxycetylene at one line, but now I use oxypropane. You can use a straight propane flame, but you get a much wider heat affected area. Brazen has been used for years and years for cycle frames. We used to use it for making wishbones on racing cars, our raised go karts, and all the cart frames were braced together. One of the reasons being on the sort of tube you're using for the go cord chassis you didn't want excessive heat so welding was ruled out also a brazen it's got a little bit more given it than a weld it will move and stretch a little bit right so we're going to warm this up run some brass into there the idea is not to melt the base metal just to get it hot it's sitting on a fire brick just to conserve a little bit of heat Right. You need to get the metal hot, but not molten. So the drain rod is pulling in quite nicely. It's following the heat. Right, that's not very pretty, but it will be a very, very strong joint. This is 1.2mm metal steel plate, sort of car bodywork thickness plate. I'm going to run down there using TIG, TIG bronze with a silicon bronze rod. Right, 
Right, I've had 20 minutes in there now. See what we've got. I want it at 60 degrees, that's what they recommended. Straight away, that's a lot better than the last time. Right, that's much better. It's taking all the crap and corrosion off there. I've rinsed some another the tap just to make sure I get all the chemical off. Give them a blow, and I think that's going to be good enough to go. It's taken that back to bright, bright metal. Screw was and spring was all rusty, so it's made a really nice job. Happy with them. Once again, it's just time to see it. Thanks for watching. As usual, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. It is important. I really would like to get 100,000 before Christmas. Um, if not Christmas, February, because in February, I'm 66 and I'm supposed to retire. I don't quite know what's going to happen. Um, I won't retire, but I think I might try and spend a little bit more time in the workshop, doing a little bit more of what I want to do. I've got loads of video projects that work is getting in the way of at the minute, so hopefully things may change a little bit in February. Anyway, thanks for watching.